Well, hello and welcome to Insight with Political Tours and Beyond the Headlines. In a change from our normal diet of foreign affairs and politics, we're taking a look at our immediate surroundings. With people spending more and more time at home, either due to work from home or possibly due to some form of lockdown, there's definitely been a greater focus on what our homes look like essentially redesigning or rejigging our interiors. So today we've got two wonderful guests. They are Freya Sims, the director of La Pada, the world's leading association of art and antiques dealers. Hello, Freya. Hi, nice to see you. And we have Helen Linfield of Wakelin and Linfield, a remarkable antiques dealer in West Sussex. Hello, Helen. Hello. Well, look, I'm the amateur here, um, but from my limited perspective, I can see that there's been a greater focus on the home. I think uh, even the, the DIY stores in my area uh, are benefiting. So too, I think, of the auction houses. But anyway, the, the object here is to have a bit of fun, get tips on what we can do to our interiors from two people who know this field inside out. Um, and Freya, just to get things started, in normal times, you would be hosting fairs, but COVID has brought that to a halt. Yeah, I, it's it's really hard and very difficult, actually, because it's a very sociable world, our world, where um, people don't just enjoy kind of coming to fairs to, for the objects, but they also kind of enjoy the camaraderie. So we're all kind of stuck. I feel quite exposed, actually, after that introduction that we're in our homes. And now we've got I've got to pretend I live in a grand, you know, palatial place rather than a maisonette in Shepherd's Bush. But anyway, we are where we are. Um, and I think that um, the sales on Kind of internet sales both at auction and uh, for dealers has gone up by about 200 wow. percent um and you really saw it happen in kind of march and april this kind of seismic um shift and i think it's fair to say that auctions have been pretty good uh online for a while but what they did was accelerate some of the things and actually really change how they offered um stock in different collections in different ways and with the dealers um the, i would say that the trade's been quite reliant on online marketplaces for mm -hmm. a little while but that's become more and more important and what we did as an association at the beginning was actually just started by doing a whole load of training sessions for our members who weren't doing well online about how to get online and kind of giving them tips to sort of reach uh marketplaces when they can't because they're so used to telling stories face to face we wanted yeah. to kind of make that happen again mm -hmm. well we've got we're again the idea is to sort of give, give us some tips on on what we can do some of the ideas out there and i wanted to start off Ray. i think you've got some slides which we'll look at in just a second but talk about the sort of shifts that have taken place in interior design um uh, I, 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 all of us have got IKEA furniture somewhere. It used to be yeah. that Swedish um, uh, furniture plus minimalism was Duriga, but that that's um, been shifting. Can you just tell us what's been happening in the last five, ten years or so? I know nothing, so you just can I go back further? Can I go back a bit further and then, so I think, I mean, you know, so when you, when you hear from Helen and what she's been doing, obviously she's been trading for, for a very long time, but I've got enough grey hairs to have been around for a while as well in both the auction and the dealer space. And I think that when I first started sort of working at Olympia a long time ago, it was, we were chintz-tastic you know there was flowers everywhere and everything was matching in terms of fabrics and Georgian furniture was you know very smart and very expensive and everything had to match and you had to have your period and you had either your country style or, or you had and it went from that to not just pre-IKEA we went toxic bachelor where it was kind of chrome and leather and white and nothing else and then we kind of had IKEA who came in and showed us how to do that cheaply once we kind of couldn't afford broy or anything else and then thankfully taste and eclecticism has come back and people have realized that actually you don't have to have one look in the same way as 200 years ago you would just keep adding things to your home and your interior so now we can happily do what i call a century mashup so you can mix it all together as long as you kind of use colors and some textures uh, and a bit of confidence. So, so, so does century mashup mean anything or is there a particular style? What is, is there something more specific to century mashup? Well, I think it can mean anything, but if you look, when, when we look later, you'll see some examples of where you can put, you know, a really nice piece of Georgian furniture, but with a, maybe a picture from the 50s and a piece of ceramic that was made yesterday. So I think that rather than 
thinking that you have to kind of have one look and actually even back to IKEA I mean I'm sitting at an IKEA desk because quite frankly it's functional it's comfortable it's easy to fit in but I'm surrounded by you know a bookcase that's an old paint from the paint and shelves and behind me is an Edwardian glass cabinet and pictures so you can kind of put things harmoniously together um, but it's really about just kind of, I suppose, color and balance and texture are the things that you can use to gel okay. things. Yeah. And also paint on Nakia is always a good thing. Okay. In, in a moment, we're going to tap into Helen's wisdom uh, and, mm -hmm. and talk about some specific pieces of furniture in a bit. But before we do that, um, Freya, can, can we just look at some of the slides you've got? So mm. just to get an idea of the, sh the shift that you've been going through. I mean, I've been to some of your fairs and I, I absolutely adore them and love them. And um, golly, I'd like to have a room looking like that too. Yes. So this is Archie Parker, who has wonderful kind of um, a mixture between old master and sporting pictures. Um, and he's actually, so he's not a furniture dealer, but you can see he's kind of borrowed some pieces there. Um, what I, one of the things actually just in terms of buying online and in this kind of sort of COVID world where it's difficult, it is that we are one trade association. There are obviously others as well, but it is good to go for something which has that stamp of approval um, just to give you some peace of mind. But if you go on to the next slide, because mm -hmm. that's just really talking about who we are and how many, I think this shows you a sort of um, a feeling of the level of celebration and what we're all missing. So this is the outside of one of our fairs and then um, taking pictures of ceramics is uh, Princess Michael of Kent. Um, we have a huge array of different kind of visitors, different ages, different sort of spending budgets, but they all come and um, in search of, you know, we might have some really modestly priced things from a dealer like Ted Few um, to um, a painting sort of, you know, close to a million that Archie might have been selling that we were looking in the previous thing so we're missing that melting pot but by going online you can get a bit of that um, mm. if we go to the next slide I think um, and again you can see, so actually the, the on the side where the lady is looking um, that is Ted Few who is the person I was talking about who, who sells wonderful whimsical things from maybe you know a bit of an Inuit's tooth to a kind of a whole load of interesting frames and um, pieces of sculpture so you know it really is a sort of a rare collection um, mm. and pictures um, and then if we I think what I wanted to do was show a little bit how you can kind of do that mixing and matching um, so if we go to the next slide that's probably also fair so mm. um, Joanna Booth is a wonderful dealer. So you've got the kind of jewellery, a lot of jewellery and silver at fairs as well. Um, and that actually is selling very well online because it's something that's easily recognisable. And I think in times of um, slightly panic or hysteria, diamonds and gold are always somewhere where people feel fairly safe and specially signed pieces. So online at the moment, so outside of the home, actually things, Cartier, uh, Rolex, those are kind of... Um, uh, antiques at the moment that are selling very well because people just kind of feel safe but um, on the other side is uh, Joanna Booth who has these wonderful kind of um, carvings from medieval um, times to sort of Georgian together with the uh, textiles and you can really see those working very well with a, a contemporary piece of furniture you know kind of a, a brilliantly kind of designed um, console table or um, again you could have something like the textile with a with a interesting piece of sculpture so you know all these things can be very harmonious when they're um, brought together and then on the next slide um, I think uh, this I just wanted to show you know, this sort of idea of shabby chic that people have kind of talked about, but actually it's, it can be a very soft, warm look where you've got the kind of um, the wooden backdrops, the kind of painted um, frame, but also the a wonderful, I mean, you can see the shape and, and structure of that um, sofa. And then next door, again, you've got a whole load of things, you know, you've got an antique chandelier, you've got a new table for sort of a vintage table, you've got, you know, old armchairs. So again, it's this kind of with colours and with, with different sort of accents, you can really kind of change. So you've obviously got a sort of more glamorous to the shabby chic. I just quite like the juxtaposition of those. Um, then on the next slide, I think this is over to Helen because this is quite an interesting project that she's just been involved with. Um, Helen, do you want to talk yes. to the 
picture yes. here. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, can you see me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, you can hear me, right. Right, well, this was a project. It was an old, um, an old vicarage, um, which the owners had bought, which had been turned into a, an old people's home. And then um, it had closed down and it was falling apart and it really needed a complete makeover. So um, they did the building side of it, sent me the plans. I went down to have a look at it and said, right, this is basically, it is a Queen Anne, beautiful old Queen Anne house. And we want it to look like a Queen Anne house again. And we want all the furniture to be of that period unless um, you want to make the, the kitchen and the eating area slightly different. So um, we'll leave it totally 100% up to you. So it was a great project because it was a big house. And, um, but they did want the drawing room to be definitely um, have a Queen Anne feel to it. So we had to research the furniture, find the pieces, mix and match a few, obviously, because um, in that time they didn't have everything that we would want today um like coffee tables and things like that so and then the kitchen and the other areas like you can see the picture here with the big old settle i put in and a couple of lovely warm looking country chairs with a little cricket table and then the eating area again with the country furniture which gives it a really warm welcoming feel but at the same time um it's very livable in so um this was the project. It took about a year to complete because it was a six bedroomed house. It had a drawing room, a dining room. It had everything in it. And the couple who had commissioned it, we kept all the furniture at home um, and we had it restored and got it all ready for them. And the day before they moved in, we took it all down in a huge lorry placed it all, it all went in beautifully, just as the drawings had suggested. We always sent them an idea of where, what we were getting and where we were putting it. Following day, the family moved in and we did absolutely everything. So it was a wonderful project. They were thrilled to bits, loved it. And it was as if they'd been living there forever. So those, that is a dream project, but you don't often get those. You just get people wanting to, to help them with the odd room or the odd um, idea that they, they've got. So they say, well, I'd like a piece of furniture to go here or there. This is the feel I like. Um, can you please help me source it? Yeah. That is normally what happens, but I this quite, was... I quite like the idea of sorting it all out in a day. We, we moved here um, two and a half years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's still a large amount of furniture sitting out there across this courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't you also do... I think it was real kind of service to the absolute degree. I think Helen even went and bought the loo roll. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so that it really could, they moved in and everything was there, washing up liquid, new roll. I've got, one, I've got one question. I've got one question. I love cricket tables. A cricket table is that um, circular top one on the top left hand side with the three, three legs to it. Why is it called a cricket table? Well, um, <laughs> that is a question that a lot of people ask and it's one that there are several answers to, but the one that I always give is that there was a game called Cracket many, many years ago, and people used to sit around it in their little kitchens and in their little farmhouses and play Cracket. And it often had two tiers, and like the one in this picture. And um, that, over the years and the centuries, has come to be called Cricket instead of Cracket. That's the, that is the art. It's nothing to do with the game at all. Great, really good explanation. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay, let's go. Have we got another one? Have we got one I think more? There's, I think there's just two more slides. So I think if we go, so this I wanted to show is, is the kind of the very fine end where you want to kind of invest in the sort of exhibition furniture. Um, and uh, again, you can just see the kind of picking out of colours and accents, but actually most of this is 19th century. So this is not the century mouth shop. This is, this is actually really sticking to, to one period. Um, um, so some, I mean, it's between the 18th and 19th centuries, but if you go to the final slide, this is uh, someone who sadly is not a, um, 
uh, Lepada dealer yet, uh, although all the previous ones have been. This is Godson and Coles, and I just absolutely love the way they do things because they have wonderful um, Georgian furniture that has kind of scale proportion, you know, it's bold. And then they always mix it with kind of um, 1950s, modern British, modern Irish pictures, contemporary ceramics, contemporary sculpture. And for me, if I had the kind of budget um that i i would like uh i would want to furnish some of my home a little bit like that i would say Great. fantastic <laughs> I, I love to get some questions from people you start putting questions in the q a box below and i'm actually going to get my wife karen in here as well because i think she's just as much party to this conversation <laughs> as I am, so we'll bring that that thing yeah. up. and Not i've got the I've dog got then thing i want to show you because i think for most people um watching this i know that there's some i've got a a, a, one of our experts has just bought a flat so he's starting completely from new and he's getting new furniture and that's a great project to have but most of us have probably been in our homes for some time and so it's about an object here or a piece of furniture there or maybe moving things around so that I think that's probably the fo our focus. I'm going to show you two of my favorite objects that we got at auction recently um, and they're ostrich eggs. Ostrich eggs in um, Edwardian egg cups. Amazing. I, I love them. <laughs> Absolutely adore them. Yes, lovely. They, can, they, get, they get moved around from place to place. They sort of move around every, every few months or so. So that, that's one thing. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna really show you another thing. We put that over there. Um, I like them because I'm South African. So it's a bit of South Africa coming here. <laughs> ah. Do you know who had them before? Do you know who gave? Um, which I think we could. Tra I think we could track it down. Um, we we bought them at auction at a local auction house called Trevanion and Dean, and they've got okay. quirky stuff. And this is from I we, because we do political study tours. We've all been all around the world, and we we've gone to North Korea quite a bit. And this is right. a in, um, poster, and this sits in our. This is in our kitchen. Wow. Um, so this goes over um, an oak sideboard. And the arg is nearby, so that's the the, the mix. The mix. I good love mix. that. Yes, yeah, very good mix. Striking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I love some of the North Korean photo photographs actually that have been done. They're amazing in terms of capturing all the pageants and just that sort of volume of people. And when they hold up the signs, um, there's a, a gallery called Atlas Gallery who sells quite a lot of North Korean um, photographs. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there any rules that are there any no nos in this sort of mix up of things? Are, you, are, you, are there things that I mean, must be ways of putting of doing things completely wrong, surely? Do you, is that to me or Helen? <laughs> Helen, do you want to start with that? Or do you, <laughs> do you want me to? Um, <laughs> well, right? <laughs> look, as far as I'm concerned, I think that um, if some if you love something mm. and it's got um, shape, color form um to it's maybe with a bit of texture um then it will work with anything as long as it's quality and it's the best of its type or it's not necessarily the best if you can't afford the best but it's um to you it's visually the best and it will work together um i will put anything together from any century um right up to the modern day i think modern sculpture and modern art, modern um, pottery, ceramics, all work beautifully together with antiques. Um, so really, I would say, no, I don't think there are any no-nos, but it depends. You've got to know what you're doing, I suppose, and you've got to know how to display it and where to place it. Um, that is the main thing. And with that, you might need a little bit of help from somebody like um, one of our, our dealer members who could help you do that. But no, generally speaking, there isn't. There is, I don't think, a rule. In a moment, I want to start bringing people on to join in the conversation and we'll bring up Diane Cook and Karen Jakes. Karen Jakes is a, a friend who's got a wonderful sprawling house near here, who's a genius and she does everything herself. And we'll talk to her in just, in just a second. But Freya, what's your view? Um, you, you, I like the wall behind you. It's quite, um, <laughs> you've got space there. You've got, you've, you've got the old furniture. It's not too cluttered. Yeah. Some people cram their walls with. Shall I move, move a bit? 
Um, you can't, I'm a bit far away, from, or you are a bit far away from everything, but the, the cabinet is an Edwardian glass cabinet that my grandparents bought on Christmas Eve for about £25 in 1950. Um, and I love it. And it's got a whole load of Irish glassware because I've sort of got Irish heritage. So it's got really old Waterford glasses. But um, the, I'm a bit far away, but I've got, so either side, there's some old master drawings in the middle, either side are what I call my fat bottomed girls who make the world go round because they're these two lovely South American illustrations of just girls with big bottoms um, that I bought from one of our dealers. Uh, and then there's some sort of um, illustrations, which are theatre illustrations actually, that I got in Paris. And in the middle is a picture by um, the ceramicist Eric Mellon. So it's a, a, a picture he did. So I've got a whole, yeah, I think fairly eclectic. And then what you can't see is I've actually got some stuff from Retruvius, which is reclamation. Um, hey, talk a bit about Vitruvius because um, I'm not, we've got people listening in the States, we've got people yeah. in Australia, um, South Africa, we've got uh, people all around the world uh, listening in. So just tell us a bit about Vitruvius. So Vitruvius, are, they're an amazing dealership. Um, husband and wife who met at Glasgow School of Design. The wife, Maria Speak, is um, interior designer and she was uh, interior designer of the year by House and Garden last year. Um, and Adam uh, is more the kind of reclamation side. And they started, they're both very passionate about sustainability, but also about design. And when the bomb went off in London um, a few decades ago, um, uh, which was a very tragic event, but also the building that was bombed had marble. And they, that was all going to be wasted. So he went to the um, guys who were kind of pulling it all apart and said hang on a second can I salvage that and he then started the first really big salvage company and he does things like um, when Heathrow Terminal 3 was being rebuilt there they were pulling apart all the floor and he got them to stop um, for three days so he could excavate all of the floor because that was from a quarry um, that no longer exists which was a British quarry they've run out of the stone so he kind of got all of that so um, he also did like a nice a nice little thing from people all over the place in terms of stars and celebs so Kira Knightley her shower is uh coated in copper that was from uh, a boiler that stood on one of the buildings at, you know on top of one of the buildings in London so he extracted that and turned mm. that into her shower yeah, um, it's really it's really clever it's really clever stuff um yeah. I know Diane Cook is um, dealing with a heating engineer, um, so we may, may not have her. Um, we'll come, come to that in a second. But um, Karen Jakes is there. Karen, can you just tell us what you've been doing this morning? Well, I've been um, painting um, some Chinese wallpaper, 18th wow. century, based on 18th century designs. And it's, um, it's very complicated and it takes me forever, but it's it's I know it's going to work really well but that's basically what I've been doing I've been painting Chinese flowers or the mm -hmm. Chinese interpretation of the western idea of flowers <laughs> now can I talk a bit about your house because the the, the 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 remarkable thing is that you do absolutely everything so our our house is 1750 uh, and with some modern stuff on the front um but by that I mean regency and the back stairs were in a bad way and we we um, got a, a great joiner to come and start repairing them. He did a fantastic job. But we went to, to Karen's house and she'd done it all by herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a case of more dash, less cash. Um, so I, I start completely the other end where I have a, a certain amount of money and it has to go a long way. So, and I've always been very creative and necessity being the mother of invention, I think one learns these tricks because one desires certain things and has to think, how can I get that without having to spend too much money? So, so hence the 18th century Chinese wallpaper, hence the 18th century print, <laughs> uh, which I created. And it's just time and the, the willingness to want to do it and to create beauty around you. And I don't think beauty costs a lot of money. You can do it very inexpensively. Um, yeah. So I think that's important to yes. note that, that a thing of beauty can, may only cost you two pounds. And if you display it well and not 
make it lose it on amongst other things it can become even more beautiful so display is a very important mm. thing i think on on when you're creating interiors is how yeah. one displays them um mm -hmm. and also i do believe that in my house everything has a story and when freya was saying about picking that her prints and paintings up from around her trips around the world i think that is so important in your own home that you actually have mm -hmm. things that that mean something to you not just buying for the sake of buying and yeah. um, i think it, to, to me i can go around my house and i think i got that there i got that there and it brings back a lovely memory and i mm -hmm. think that's so important yeah yes can i, I agree can i pick up on a point in terms of do you mind in terms yeah. of um just beauty not necessarily being expensive i think i think you're absolutely right but i think what's quite interesting is that quite often when you want something that's really beautiful or exquisite it's the time and the labor that's gone into it into making it that is what kind of creates the premium and what's so amazing about kind of buying antiques and things is actually some of it's relatively undervalued now and in terms of the craftsmanship that has gone into those things and the labor of love means you can get something really you know quite amazing for not very much but if you're trying to replicate that with something that's modern and contemporary and has felled a few new trees to do it it can be extraordinarily expensive because now time um and labor intensive is very i mean it's at a real premium in terms of, of spend so mm. um I kind of agree with you, um, Karen, but I also think that, yeah, you can end up paying a lot for somebody's labour. Yeah. Okay. D Diane, look, you've got a, a question uh, or uh, you want to get people's um, feedback on something. If Diane, Diane, I'm hoping you're there. And that the yes, I am. I'm here and I'm trying to um, get the camera to work as well. Oh, um, hello. So my question, hello, uh, and look at my background. <laughs> Very nice. Um, my question is really, what is your opinion, both of you, of this as an interior? I hope you can see it. I'll raise, uh, it, raise it up a bit more. Oh yeah, is that okay? Oh, we're getting into hot territory in here now. This is yes, not very hot. Helen, <laughs> what, do think, Helen what do you think of that interior? What a great question, Diane. What a great. So question. we have been subjected to this interior for something yeah. like six months or so, three yeah. months. It's so uninspiring, isn't it? <laughs> we, uh, um, we had uh, something quite interesting. We did an, a conference last year at the Royal Society of Arts and we had an interior designer called Ed Bulmer, Edward Bulmer, who if oh, you yes. don't know him yet, so, and he does the wonderful paints and he's done amazing interiors. And, um, and we asked the question about the interior that he was sitting in, you know, where we'd invited him to talk. And he went, well, I absolutely hate it. I mean, they've done a terrible job. They've got the paint wrong. I mean, you know, it's got a wonderful kind of fresco, but they've done nothing to it. And he ended up sort of assaulting, um, you know, one of our rarefied art institutions, um, <laughs> which was slightly embarrassing. But uh, it is drab. But yeah, you're right. Well, I think we've had enough of that background. It is yeah. very yes. dull. And it's very American in the way that it's being kind of portrayed, yes. I think. Yes. Mm. Right. Let, let's, I've got, I can see my sister online. Um, Lucy, oh my goodness. So um, I've got to bring Lucy in for a question. And then I'd love to get, a, a, um, I can see, I'm going to pick on Laurelie Walter, um, who I know as a, a family friend and is an interior designer as well. So I'd love to get, I'd love to know what Laurelie is working on at the moment. What, what are her focuses at the moment? But Lucy, you've got a question. Go ahead, Lucy. You need to unplug your microphone. And I'm hoping she's actually doing at once at the same time. So. Hello. Go on, Lucy, go on. Uh, so we are moving house. Uh, we're moving from our Victorian townhouse um, to a late 17th century up to 19th century bakehouse in a rural environment and we're selling our big furniture because it won't fit in our new house so i'd like to um with rather a small budget buy um some nice new old furniture for um our new house and what top three pieces would if you'll call the panel the panel recommend for me to go in search of and i really don't know what i'm doing i just um, i like pretty things helen you you. oh helen, goodness me Top three. Um, well, 
I always say to people, it's got to be practical and it's got to be beautiful. Those are the two things which I think are the most important um, criteria when you're looking for something for your home. Um, if you're going to a, an old bake house, I should imagine it's um, probably got a huge amount of character and therefore would lend itself very well to really lovely, good country furniture, um, which I have always loved. And I don't think it's gone out of fashion for the, all the decades that I've been in the business. It's made from good um, indigenous woods, beautiful um, walnuts, fruit woods. It's lovely and you will never regret buying it. It's also very practical, serviceable and usable. And um, it really fits into any setting and especially the sort of house that you're going into. So maybe a good, um, a lovely um, farmhouse table that you can eat off, a few nice, really nice um, country primitive chairs. And obviously maybe a housekeeper's cupboard to store your things in, which are very, very practical. If you like painted ones, you can have some with a bit of paint on because some of the early um, furniture, English country furniture was painted and that's very popular at the moment. Um, and of course, a really nice, um, comfortable sofa. You could have a nice old knoll sofa, which are really, really comfortable if you don't want to go for something modern and so on. <laughs> We've got, Lucy, there are two in the, um, in the stables here, <laughs> two knoll sofas, just in case. But I want, <laughs> Whilst, whilst Freya's going to answer the question, I'm also going to produce another piece of furniture, but Freya... Thank you. So I had to, I, so um, in terms of what you should do, I had to very rudely in this COVID times, uh, the doorbell went for a delivery. So I just ran halfway through. So um, I think one of the things that I think is important that we're, we're used to, I've just been sort of looking at houses and thinking about moving. And part of the reason I haven't moved is because I sort of live in the top two floors of a, a, a Victorian house, it's very light. And the, the thing that I'm sort of quite sort of keen on is, so I totally agree with Helen that the sort of beautiful primitive furniture, those kind of warm tones, but also painted furniture, but then keeping it quite light in terms yeah. of the color schemes and everything else to bring it up. Because I think some, houses you can end up feeling it can all become sort of a bit intense so I, I think sort of light palette tones and things yes and, I agree and yes that's where I think mixing some kind of contemporary fabrics and, and ceramics yes. and things can just lift well, can um, I, I'm going to show you and this is because this is a dark room this is not and I, can I wait I'm just so that, and also can I say hello Lucy I haven't seen you for about 30 years but hello <laughs> very nice to see you too Freya um, <laughs> But I want, I want to show you, uh, this is not the room to show it off in. This is because this is a dark okay. room with dark, dark walls. This is a, a, a study. A studious uh, room. One of my favourite bits of furniture, which is a provincial North Wales um, oh. oak chair. And we've got four of them and none of them are the same. They're all different. Every single one is, sli is slightly different. And it, That's it, right. It's so simple. Um, it's re a really basic piece of furniture. And I, I, it's one of my favourite things in the house. I really, really like these. I think. They're yes, good. very nice. Yeah. Anyway, that's all, me. all beautifully handmade. That's why they're all slightly different. They're not, they're not churned out from a factory. They're beautifully made by somebody who loved making them. That's okay. why you love them. I, I think actually, and that was what back to the trends. That's one of the things that I think is is really helpful is that this sort of fashion for having everything exactly the same um, is moving away because I think that that's very difficult. You know, actually there's a, bu a business called Jam, which is an amazing business and there's lots of things I love about what they do, but they basically end up making a reproduction next to an original so that you can have a matching pair. But it's rather lovely that quite often you can't have a matching pair yes. and everything has its slight own character. And so I, I'm quite pleased that we're sort of, it's becoming more eclectic and celebrating a bit of difference is a good thing. I, I, can, I, yes. think, that's, I think that's important too, because I think to buy just one, one chair is far cheaper than buying a set of six where the prices tend to go a bit higher. And it's so lovely to have this eclectic mix of chairs yes. that one can buy inexpensively rather mm -hmm. than looking for, you know, the sets. And I think yes. it's a far nicer look. It's a far more uh, comfortable 
look. Mm -hmm. And um, it is. I, so I think that's uh, perhaps another idea that that um, the co the um, caller questioner looks into is actually not going for perfect perfection in, no. in, in everything. Sometimes it's lovely to have something that is absolutely exquisite, and I totally uh, agree with Freya on that. That to have, and I think it was it was Beverly Nichols, the author, who said when he was doing up Mary Hall that um, he said he, he was quite happy just to have one beautiful thing in his room rather than a room full of rubbish because <laughs> he couldn't bear to go in that room otherwise. And yeah. So I think it's important that perhaps they do look to buy one fine piece and then, that, that's you know, something yeah. that then relax themselves into, you know, uh, putting together uh, their home. After all, it's their home. It's not a studio. Exactly. It's not a, exactly. it's not a sale room. You know, it is their home. So I think so I think that's a good idea. And I'm glad that we're moving to that. that, that yes, more we, are. we are. Look, feel, and use of antiques, I think. Yes. Yeah. Freya, sorry, you're going to say something. I was just going to say one of the things that I thought was quite interesting from stats for interior designers at the moment. One is that they're actually busier than ever been because obviously we're all stuck in the houses looking at what we um, you know, need to do. And I think if people do have the budget to go on holiday and that's been taken away, then they're putting it in their home. But the other that I thought was quite interesting that sort of mirrors what's been said is that quite often their budget will be the same as one big piece. So there'll be kind of one thing that someone like Sophie Ashby will buy. So we'll work about a piece of furniture and then the rest of the decorating budget will be the similar to that, but it will be kind of around one mm -hmm. key standout yeah. piece. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. which is... I agree. Right, I, um, Laurelie, um, yes. I've known you for Yonks, you've known me for Yonks. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what can you tell me what you've been working on what are the what are people asking from you 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 work um on the interior design um mainly in london i think i'm right in saying is that right well uh, anywhere really but anywhere. i was going to tell you about i was going to ask actually about odd heirlooms because this is what gives you an eclectic mix of antiques and things isn't it when you're left something and i was left an absolutely enormous cupboard sort of armoire carved i was told by my great grandfather in india whether that's true or not. Anyway, it's pretty old. Anyway, what I have done with it, and it's behind me, can you see? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 that, yes. I've taken it apart, and it is, this is just sitting there, not too sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, but the other bits I have made into three double bed heads, so you can imagine how big it was. So I've done <laughs> various different things. This, they, I can't show them because they're in Aubra. But the, that it's, I thought I was being really good. I've ticked every box, you know, I've done the recycling, I've kept the heirloom. <laughs> got, this one I'm waiting for, I'm, these are door, painted doors, I painted them. It was obviously dark, dark black. And I didn't like that. Anyway, I've done various different paint surfaces and added finials and right. poles and all sorts of things. And it was rather a success. So I was just going to say that I thought I was really kind of onto something there with my. Sorry, go on. You've done even better than recycle. You've reused. Used, yes. Yeah. Recycle, upcycle, upcycle. Yeah. I should have said. Yeah. Upcycle. yeah. yeah. Yes, and I can do that with, with, the, with the heirlooms, but I'd like someone to tell me what I can do with five fish forks. Five fish forks. <laughs> because no I've, idea. I've got lots of those. Yeah. Sets of five fish forks. Five and, fish forks. You know, odd, these odd heirlooms you get. So this is, this is what makes life interesting, I think. Yeah, I have seen sort of slightly unattractive mobiles made out of old bits of cutlery, but I'm not, I'm not the greatest <laughs> fan of those. No, I don't think <laughs> I don't um, think that's you could make a whole load of very cool talk bangles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pick on some antipodeans um, because I think us Brits have been dominating this conversation. And we do have also we've got some people in the States as well. I can see Patty Miller, um, who's in the States. I can see Louise Tarrant and I can see Lois Tart. Um, and I'm going to pick on it. It is quite late in Australia. Um, so they may be in their bedgowns. Um, <laughs> and you don't you don't have to open your microphone but if i could if i could hear from uh lois or louise that'd be wonderful patty you're there it's early in the morning you're just getting up patty patty miller who is a garden designer so you you're gonna have a view on this or louise have we got the microphone open patty no i think we've got who have we got there i can see lois i can see lois there i can see 
<laughs> silhouette. I can see lots of images going on here. I can see. see yeah, go on, so Lurch. You can't see my flat. It's I live in a shoebox. Whereas you're talking about all your wonderful country mansions and your, your <laughs> you, know, you know, six bedrooms or whatever. I live in a very small <laughs> shoebox in inner city Sydney. And so what, this, and what, what have I been buying lately? Um, I'll shoot the virtual background. Um, shoot the virtual background. There we go. That's better. Now we that's can. A bit long slide. This is what somebody's place looks like after they've finished a PhD. Uh, <laughs> notes. We can even see the notes up. Yeah, we can. Right. Fantastic. Yeah, so you basically, you. I'm now stuck with a very small shoebox with a few items, some lovely um, antiques that I've got in Iran, courtesy of Nicholas's holiday there. Um, as you can see, I don't have the right lighting for Zoom or anything. Um, and I'm just sort of looking at it going, well, what does one do with one's apartment now, which, you know, when it used to be decorated for about 10 years with notes. <laughs> I've got to keep the notes. You can't get rid of the notes. I think the notes have got to be, they've got to get, um, to remain there somehow or other. Nicholas, the notes are going. <laughs> I would say get rid of the notes. Helen, what's your, you must, you, Helen, you must, must come across this, with this problem a lot. I mean, people yeah. live in very confined spaces and it comes back to your rule of, uh, you know, having a few objects here and there that you really value. Yes. Um, if you're in a very confined space, um, you've got to make it, the walls very light and airy. So it gives you a feeling of space if you haven't got space. Um, and then you can add a few pieces of, I mean a few sculptural pieces of furniture. And, um, and then you can add around it the things that you've collected on holiday, things that mean a lot to you that like um, your previous caller said, it's very important that everything tells a story and it means something to you, especially if you've got a very small confined space, but it isn't difficult um, to do. It's just, you've got to be very, very brave, get rid of things that you really don't need, don't love and start afresh and have those nice bright pale walls. And then you can add whatever you like that you feel is going to make it, make your life easy, happy. Um, that's the most important thing. Things that give you pleasure. Delight, yeah. as Marie Kondo says. Yeah, what? you can. Uh, oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah read it. She, spark joy, isn't that what she tells us to do? Yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, spark joy. I also think that sometimes um, having. I mean, I've got lots of small little pictures, but I've noticed that in one of in my smaller. So I I live in a flat, a two bedroom flat, but it's a flat. Just so you know. But I sometimes find that actually one big picture big. can sometimes make it feel bigger, actually, in terms of the scale. And then with you have furniture that's sort of three quarter size pieces, then Im immediately it can all feel a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is all about it is all about what you love. And I think that was something that came out of another um, call I did with some interior designers and a journalist who writes every week. And he was looking at, I think, that spending time in our homes is actually sort of amplifying our own tastes a little bit rather than just completely following um, the, the trend, trend now yeah. in quite, you know, we're feeling a little bit braver about saying, yeah, I love this. And it's because I've been on this holiday or I've done this and actually just, um, you know, the color pattern texture, just um, going with what we like a little bit more and feeling a bit more confident. You're back. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I think, yes. um, I think what, what's, in, I mean, I go sort of against somewhat in the, the, the pale light colors because I love color mm. and I love I love to walk into a room that is bright and cheerful by the use of color so oh I, yes I, yes I, you I, add I, color. I, I would I, so I and I think we, we should be more bold with color mm -hmm. and I, I agree color. yeah and because mm. we're frightened of it and, we, and and when we look back in history we just see how vibrant mm -hmm. the regency rooms were how vibrant yeah all of the in history the rooms the georgian the slightly more subdued with georgian but um they were just full of color and mm -hmm. i think that's important that we we, we get more confidence in how oh we yes yes color. i totally agree so yeah. um i i think mm. and and also i i again it's it's what what you love and and i think that's an important thing is that as we've all said it's when you walk into your room it should give it should 
give you a lift. Yeah. That, that oh, totally. Yeah. You, that, yes. That, that, that yeah. give you confidence to to uh, to enjoy the space you have, but also to give you the confidence then to go out and do what you have to do, knowing that you have this sanctuary, uh, which yes. is totally your space, how you want it. Mm. So I think I think it's important. And I also I, I've carried a word with me for like three years now, and it's it's editing. And I think <laughs> sometimes we we could do with a bit of editing. Um, do you, uh, Karen, do you want to come and edit my our bookshelves here? There's quite a lot of editing to go on in this house. But I, I think that's important. Is, is it's don't, actually... Don't, 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 sorry, don't throw it, it away. Just, no, 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 just no, put it away and then come back to it. But don't throw it all for everybody to see all at once. I, you know, I, I think... I, it, it's yeah. also Don't what all, all great collectors do. I mean, it is that they edit and edit and they start off. And I think that's what's fantastic is you can start with any budget and any interest. Yeah, exactly. And as you develop yeah. and refine your taste, you edit, exactly. edit, and then you yes. kind of create something along the way. And I, yeah. I think that whether it's you're decorating your home or actually collecting, I mean, I collect illustrated books, you mm. know, you kind of edit as you go along. Exactly. Mm. I think it's an important word in interiors, I think, yeah. editing. <laughs> but but Frere or Helen, I mean, white seems to have been, and that white seems to be a, a passe. It's not, it's not, um, we've gone and moved away from you know, painting doors white everywhere, painting walls white everywhere. Is that right? <laughs> well, in, in my <laughs> view, yes. But a lot of interior designers will tell you dis differently. They will prefer to stick to their greys, their whites, their beiges, which I find incredible incredibly boring and very clinical. And I think in this time now um, with the COVID, I think that people are wanting to be um, stay at home more, but they're going to have to stay at home more and they want to feel bright and happy and they want colour. And I agree with what um, the, the previous lady has just said. We do need colour. Look at those beautiful Regency Georgian houses. They always had lovely rich colours in them. And I think this is what's coming back now. I think the trend is for more colour and yeah. much more vibrancy just to give everybody a little bit of a boost. That's what we okay. need. And colour does I make think, you feel good. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. I think that, that you're absolutely right. Colour is definitely coming back. I also think that one of the things that we're, you're seeing, and I think this has also kind of come out of lockdown to an extent, is that we've had all of the, you know, everyone's sort of gone for open plan. Mm. And now they've lived together and they've educated their children together and they've worked in their and they're like, oh my Lord, how on earth <laughs> can I cope with this? So one of the kind of big things I think that people are doing at the moment are zoning areas in their house. And that might be with colour, that might be with a desk and a kind of, you know, a PC fun area for the kids and then the working bit there. But I think that there's a lot of editing going on there in terms yeah. of, of colour and yeah. zoning so that we can all kind of not kill each other in mm. our Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> it, it is um, um, one... one you have to remember this, the people who are living in the countryside, you've got the privilege of the open spaces. And if you've got, you know, we, we, a lot of people do forget that most people are living in quite confined spaces during this yeah. period. Um, Patty Miller, I think you're, I'm hoping you're there, Patty, because um, I wanted to get a view from a, across the pond. It's difficult to choose a time that suits all time zones. Um, and um, sort of lunchtime, one, two o'clock is early morning East Coast. And very, very early if you live further west. So I don't know if, if um, Patty's going to be there um, or, or not. I think, um, Patty, if you're there, you can just open your microphone on the bottom left-hand side, left side of your screen. But not to worry um, if, if not. Freya, what, is, what are your next events? What, what are you doing next? What's your, um, how are you getting your members out there? Um, I think really what we're what we've done is we've created so we have a, a website where people can um, buy directly from the website and in the past it's be, just been a request basis we've now got a kind of buy it now button up to five thousand pounds so people can actually just get something straight away so so one of the good things is we've been trying to sort of just um, get as much stock and online as we can we've supported quite a lot of kind of virtual events 
um, for members uh, in terms of this kind of virtual fair. I'm looking at doing an auction for Lapada members as well um, and some other elements of, of just people being able to kind of get their stock. Um, one of the things that I think is quite important to remember, so even with all the different tiers of, you know, low, medium to high risk is in most areas, unless you're high, non-essential retail is open and the, the dealers shops are still open and in most cases, I mean, they're incredible, they're great to uh, um, visit where you get all the stories, but they're also very safe because in most places you have to ring a bell. You're never going to be overwhelmed by too many people. If you go to an area like Ken Church Street, it's almost like going to a fair because you've got, you know, sort of 30 dealers on one road. So you can kind of go and experience and enjoy that and be, you know, in a kind of COVID safe manner. So there's lots to see online, lots to, lots to do in that way, but actually as well, go and visit some of mm. the, the shops that are there and ring before to make an appointment if you're worried. But, you know, there's nothing really that substitutes seeing the things and, yeah. and hearing the stories. Oh, and actually, sorry, one other thing is that we will be doing and people will see more of is virtual sort of 360 tours where you can go in with the dealer and sort of go further, see the shop, but go further into seeing a particular item, you know, then requesting a kind of mm. condition report and some more information on that. So you can kind of get that experience if you can't get out and if you're mm. far away or shielding or whatever. Okay. Um, you, um, Lepard, you've got members in the States. Um, Helen, I know you, you deal with American customers as well. Can you talk a bit about the, the other markets and differences in taste and, and what's happening there? I'm putting you on the spot a bit, um, perhaps a, a bit. Helen? Well, um, recently we haven't been having many inquiries from the States for obvious reasons, I think. Um, so um, generally speaking, we have found that the, um, the best things for us to sell in the States are, again, the country things, because we sell to New England um, dealers and privates who love the country furniture that we love. Mm. And we find that that um, goes down really well over there. Um, we sell to Australia, we sell to New Zealand, and they are, again, wanting that sort of thing. I always remember we went to a fair in Melbourne and we went over, we thought, ah, William the Fourth, that's the right period, that's what they'll want, Rosewood mahogany, all that sort of thing, because that's the period that they were building up everything there. Mm. We took it all over. A friend of ours took just country furniture, just the sort of thing that we preferred to deal in and dealt in. He sold out, we didn't sell a thing. Mm. So it just goes to show the Australians, um, they do love our English country furniture. Um, it is something that fits in anywhere. I always say to people, if you've got a warehouse or you've got a country cottage or you've got a farmhouse or you've got even a sophisticated Georgian townhouse. Mm. It will work anywhere because it's sculptural and it's timeless. And um, I know I'm pushing it a bit, but that is because I do love it. <laughs> I'm yeah. so enthusiastic about it and it goes with anything. Yeah. But anyway, um, generally speaking, um, it's just good English clients collectors and clients who we are selling to but yeah. from the net because since the fairs have disappeared um and i have to say that my favorite fair was barclay square which was absolutely fabulous fair and um unfortunately now that that has gone um hopefully we'll be back next year because um and think if things get better and i hope they will do but that is the place where people love to go to they absolutely love to come and chat to everybody mm -hmm. go from stand to stand and make the comparison it also gives you a room to sort of you know to it gives you a look you can actually it see does. in front of you and you can dream saying when you say wow you know i can aim yes. for something like that so it is that's it is incredible. absolutely right yeah that's i'm gonna get right, prayer to chip in a second but helen are you able to bring that wonderful, I don't know if it's a Windsor chair or stick back chair, the, the chair behind you, are you able to bring that slightly forward to the, and, and lift it up to the computer? Don't if you can't, if it's some enormous weight, don't. It is some enormous weight, but I'm sitting right. on another one, which isn't such an enormous oh, weight. Well, there we go. There we go. Uh -huh, just uh -huh. as beautiful. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah, 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 lift it forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Great. But the other one is very, very heavy. Um, yeah. And in fact, it won an award <laughs> as the best piece of sculpture in the fair, to recent fair. But I mean, these sort of chairs, 
everybody loves them. People who mm. deal in real for wonderful formal furniture, the best quality formal furniture, go into their homes, they'll have one of these. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, you so see the prices at auction for some of those things have been soaring. They have, they have. Um, they really have. It's something which has held its value. Although I will say to all, everybody that deals in um, so-called brown furniture, um, this is experiencing a, a, a revival at the moment, which I'm very happy to, to say it deserves to be because it is so cheap, the mm. quality and is so good, but it is not now commanding the prices that it did in the heady days of the 80s and the 90s. Oh, sorry, what um, isn't? Sorry, what isn't? Brown, a brown, brown furniture yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. commanding the same price yeah. if it's just what I call furnishing brown furniture. Yeah. I, I mean, I this is what I love uh, in a way in that. You know, if you wanted to um, furnish your house of IKEA, the amount of money we've spent on furnishing things here on brown furniture, we've saved money compared to IKEA. Of uh, course, you have. The, the, my the the best thing we've bought is, and I boast about this all the time, is a 1790 um, uh, sideboard. Um, the length of this room in our mm. dining room for a hundred pounds. I can believe it. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. isn't it? Ridiculous. I mean, it, absolutely, absolutely. Just, I know. It's crazy. crazy. I mean, Frey, I was, really good to out there. Yeah, Frey, I was talking about um, the different styles. Um, Aust Australia, we, Australia, the US, um, they buy a lot from the UK. Um, can you can you make any sort of comments about the, what the, those markets at the moment? Um, I would say it's it's interesting again, sort of looking at the online stats um, where we saw in the past a lot of jewelry, a lot of flat art, sort of um, etchings, prints, because it's very easy from a description to see what exactly what it was on the internet. Those all did very well. Furniture was sometimes a little slower, but actually we've really seen that change, um, and lockdown has slightly amplified that. Mm. Um, in terms of kind of, uh, you know in terms of sort of Helen saying, yes, provincial furniture, very popular in America, Australia, but actually also uh, is kind of um, very ornate French furniture when you're going to kind of South Carolina or mm. if you're going, so, you know, actually, again, there will be very different styles who appeal to different wealth and actually yeah. for the really wealthy, you know, how they do their house in Palm Beach to how they do their townhouse in New York to how they do um, their place sort of in, in kind of one of the states, maybe in um, New Hampshire or something will be very different as well. They very will kind of tend to, yeah. to change it a lot. Um, one thing that I think is kind of worth noting is that at the beginning of um, coronavirus with sort of transport and without planes and everything, it was quite difficult and quite punishingly expensive for international clients to buy. That's all got much better. Um, you know, talking to shippers, they were sort of waiting for certain shipments to, to mm -hmm. happen and it suddenly, you know, was quite price people out of the market have been able, you know, they could confidently buy online, but then actually once they tried to ship, it was difficult. Yes. Um, but that's all become much better now as things have kind of moved again. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, we've got to wrap up shortly, but I've got one more question here that's been written in and it's really about fabrics and curtains. Um, fabrics and curtains are the, the, one of the things that is easiest to change and people do it quite frequently. So perhaps you can just give us some, some ideas about what's coming in, what, what people are looking at at the moment. I know it's, you could choose a whole range of things, a huge wide open question, well, but somebody's I, asked, so I need some suggestions. So I think, I mean, fabrics, curtains, but also wallpapers. I mean, you know, Karen is painting her own, which is amazing, but it also, if you look at, I mean, there is so much color and texture from the sort of Molly Mahons to, um, uh, you know, the more traditional Colfax and Fowler and Cole and Sun. So, so that's an area as well. But I think that um, when you look at some of the fabrics, there's a lot of block printing, borrowing from sort of Indian styles, um, painted um, lampshades is a way that people are kind of changing their mm. look, you know, that there's sort of people are kind of wrapping paper around their lampshades. Um, so there's an, there's an awful lot. Um, Osborne, uh, some, Colfax and Fowler is always good to look at because they've always married yes. the antiques and the fabrics and paints. Edward Bulmer is good to look at because he's in interior design, but he's got his own paint range. So looking at the sort of mood boards on his site, on his website is a good thing to do. So I think, I think kind of looking at those mood boards, um, 
is is a good way of kind mm. of seeing what's out there and also i mean you know world of interiors those kind of every month they have those wonderful pages that are beautifully shot of just swatch after swatch after swatch mm. of material or color um that's kind of the thing to look at at that time great mm. well listen i want to thank you both very much indeed we're we're um drawing to a close um it, it's been wonderful having both of you there um, Freya Sims from Lapada, um, uh, Helen Linfield's expertise. Helen, we could have we could have talked for we could have gone through several decades of experience there. We haven't. We certainly still, could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel we've missed out. I feel we've missed out. But thank you so much for joining us. I've really really enjoyed it. Thank um, you. Ju just to give everyone a heads up, our next um, insight is tomorrow, and we're going to be looking at Wisconsin. Um, we've got two speakers from the Republican Party. What's the Republican Party strategy there? They are in trouble. That's with Mark Jefferson and Heather Smith. So we'll be looking at Wisconsin there. Um, and then we start our virtual tour, our election series, which is on Thursday. The first county we're going to is Lucerne County in Pennsylvania. Can the Dems win the blue collar vote? That's uh, with Malcolm Brown. Uh, looking at that county there. And then we'll be in Philadelphia on Friday. If you haven't signed up for our US election tour, do please send us an email. We do have space on it. Um, my thanks again, everyone, for joining our session. Thank you again to Freya Sims and to Helen Linfield. This has been a really, really good discussion. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye Thank for you. now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.